How y'all doing? This might be choppy for a second because I'm fucking out of breath. Forgot my water and I can't get up here without bringing my water. <sighs> Nothing, thank God. I would be drunk and out of breath. Fuck. <laughs> All right, how y'all doing? All right, I like that answer because this is about the only time and place that you can get that kind of answer because I did it in the most inappropriate place one time and I was the only motherfucker on that beauty did it. <laughs> Whenever I came out to do this show tonight, my friend told me, he said, Nate, when you go do this show, he said, you need to go hard. I said, man, I'm 32 years old, everywhere I go, I go hard. <laughs> kind of hard right now. Stop looking. <laughs> yes, sir, I am drinking water, and I'll tell you why. Because the first time I got on stage, I had three shots of Jaeger right before I got up here. Thinking that that would break the tension. Nope, just made me forget a bunch of shit I was going to say. <laughs> and I always record myself just to see what y'all see when I'm up here on stage. And that first time I went on watching that video tape, and I was thinking to myself, Oh my God, I the people thought I was special doing stand up with my make a wish. <laughs> it was that bad. I also like a very thing in life. I think stand up is kind of like my first sexual experience. It was scary, exciting, and quick. <laughs> and about five minutes, a few years later, I'm ready to do that shit again. <laughs> Woo. I am 32 years old. Now, this time in my life, besides time to plan for my retirement, so I invited this lady over to discuss my budget to see where I can start saving money. But let's face it, the only time I'm good with money is when I'm standing in front of beer out of Walmart trying to figure out how many ounces of beer I'm going to get for the least amount of money. <laughs> so she said, all right, Mr. Massey, what age do you want to retire? I said, 45. <laughs> That's a table. So she took all my information, she analyzed it, come back two weeks later, said, all right, Mr. Massey, you said you want to retire at age 45. Your life expectancy is 83, so between now and the time you retire, you're going to have to save over $800,000 to live out the rest of your retirement. And I got up from the table, she thought, Mr. Massey, where are you going? I said, I'm going to smoke a cigarette short my life expectancy. I can't afford to live that fucking long. <laughs> True story, that lady didn't even fell out of her chair laughing her ass off. I said, I don't think I'm going to get a stand-up comedian. Uh, I've been married 12 years. Yeah, I'm glad for that. I'm going to do my third course. I am back out on the dating scene. Ladies, keep your seats. No, seriously. I went out on a date one night with this girl and I wanted to take her to this real nice restaurant so we pull up to the drive-thru. I'm on a budget. <laughs> it's the only Mexican restaurant that uh, is owned by Chinese people. I think they call it Cheese and Beans. <laughs> so I placed my order and at the end of it she said, you want a fucking napkin? I said, you hear what this bitch just said to me? We got kids in the fucking car. I pulled around the window. I said, excuse me, man. She said, you want a fucking napkin? I said, I'm about to come through that window. She said, no, you want a fucking napkin. <laughs> <laughs> she turned her back to me. She said, Siri, America, you doing around there? Speak freaking English. <laughs> I do have a girlfriend and uh, she was reading a magazine article the other day that said that 95% of all men fantasize about getting back to action. She looked at me and she said, I don't understand this obsession. If you had two words to describe this obsession, what would they be? And I said, Taco Bell. She thought, what the hell is that supposed to mean? I said, that means that 95% of all men are thinking outside the line. So she said, all right, what do you wear in about? And I said, Subway. She's like, I don't get that shit either. I said, that means that most women want to split long, but they're only eating six inches. <laughs> <laughs> so we're fresh. <laughs> How many 
of y'all busted y'all's ass all week at work. Hell yeah, just to get to this spot tonight, I admire everybody that works their ass off. I work six days a week. I deliver groceries for a living. If I, I deliver in Shreveport, Boulder City here, if I look familiar, that's why. Our company has got these brand new computers that we've got, these little scanner deals. We've got to scan a package to go to the stop. And it speaks to us. And uh, say that we've got a package that's not supposed to go to that stop, and we scan it, it'll say package undeliverable. Well, I had a Mexican friend of mine get up my truck the other day, and accidentally scanned himself, and it said, illegal. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. I'll see what some people say every time I go somewhere and scan somebody. So I scanned this married woman and said, unavailable. Scan this hooker and said, affordable. <laughs> Tell them what some people say whenever I scan my ex-wife. Motherfucker got a car, and now the son of a bitch won't work. <laughs> I think I'm in more fun than y'all are. <laughs> I lived a uh, stop down in downtown Freeport, and uh, it happens to be run by a gay friend of mine. And the only way I can get in to deliver this stop, he's got a cell phone number, and I've got to call him and tell him I'm ready to deliver. I called him yesterday, and I said the stupidest shit I could possibly say, which is I'm standing at your back door ready to make a delivery. Five seconds later, he opens the door and says, I know you got a big logo for me. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I do shows all over the place. Uh, I did a show one time in Dallas, and I had this guy that was in the front row. He was heckling me the whole time I was on stage. And when I first started doing comedy, I wrote a heck line. Y'all tell me if y'all like this. At the end of my set, I walked up to him and I said, hey, man. Don't try to beat no fight me when I get off stage because I'm a pussy. Because I'm the type of guy who believe you're all what you eat. So why are you being such a dickhead? <laughs> oh, snap. I went red in that gang on that motherfucker, didn't I? Hell yeah, that's the way I roll. I got a blue flag hanging on my backside, but I'll be on the left side. Yeah, that's the crib side. <laughs> Love you, Snoop. Oh, uh, how many people have kids out here? That <laughs> doesn't sound like a pretty heavy weight for the little bastards. <laughs> I got three kids, and all three of my kids are picky eaters. One doesn't like salad, one doesn't like corn, and one doesn't like mashed potatoes, and this puzzles me, because when all three of them younger, all three of you eat sand. <laughs> my son ate so much sand one time, he shit a chandelier. <laughs> It's a true story, guy. Ain't in my house, the story is pretty, but it's a shitty source of light. <laughs> now, I feel blessed to have three good kids, and I'll tell you how I know they're good, because when we're sitting on the couch watching 9911, my kids will chime in and say, I'll beat that kid's ass. <laughs> Man, you know, that, that's the lateness of patience. Some little kid will kick his mom, and she'll grab that parent and say, Well, what you need to do is kill a little so I can keep mommy. What, fuck that! I got a cattle prod that'll fix that shit. That's what I call shock therapy. Back like, kids and dad like that little bastard glow in the dark. See, that right there is why I can't have my own reality program, because if I did, they'd be calling their daddy 911. The reason for that is they'd be the number that the parents be calling after they found their kids tied to a chair with a piece of duct tape over their mouth and nose tape over the forehead and said, sorry, I ran out of bullets. I was telling the guy one time I had three kids and he said, man, I bet you never get any kind of rest. And I said, no, I do thanks to the CPAP. He's like, hell yeah, drink it up. I said, no, man, you don't understand. I got three kids. You give each one of them two beers? You can sleep all fucking night long. Just kidding, I don't get my kids out of the hall. They try to make sure it's work like a fucking charm. The only reason why I got to come out tonight. I have been married before, and uh, one thing that irritated me the most about my ex is she just had no common sense. One time after the 9-11 attacks, I came home from work and she bought 10 rolls of duct tape and 10 rolls of plastic wrap. I'm like, what the hell are you going to do with that? She said, I'm going to sell this house just like we have a camera. I'm like, we live in a trailer. <laughs> Why don't you find out where them ass rats are coming in and plug that motherfucking hole? I 
was always sexually frustrated when I was married to my ex because sex to her was like an Olympic event. She thought she only had to participate once every four years. <laughs> yeah, that bitch never brought home the gold, neither. <laughs> you know, but I did figure out I could have sex while I was married to my wife. Uh, I just had to wait till she fell asleep. <laughs> and I prayed like, yes, she wouldn't wake up because she'd be pissed off at me and my girlfriend. <laughs> Hey, y'all don't judge me. When I was married to my ex, she was very abusive. One time, he and us with a meat tenderizer. <laughs> that is a true story. And I got pissed off. I'm like, why the hell are you trying to tenderize something? I can't get you to stick in your mouth. <laughs> y'all take that one home with you. I don't want y'all to think I'm an asshole or anything like that talking about my ex. Uh, I am the type of guy who likes to help out somebody whenever I can. Uh, I saw this guy stand on the street corner the other day and he saw the sign that said, Homeless Hungry. And I felt sorry for him, so I gave him a check for $100. As I drove away, I called that check and stole it. <laughs> y'all don't judge me, y'all be having no things to be. We'll be homeless and hungry for the next five to ten years. <laughs> That's what I call putting my tax dollars to work right there. Shit, yeah. Now, I had a lady come up to me after one of my shows and she was pissed off at me and she said, well, you wouldn't find it very funny if you were the one begging for money. I said, listen, lady, I said, as long as there's a help wanted sign in the window and I'm physically able, I ain't begging for shit. And she said, well, what if you couldn't read or write to fill out an application? I was like, the motherfucker knows how to spell it, homeless and hungry. I said, lady, won't you stop begging me? She said, I ain't begging for nothing. I said, yes, you are. You're begging me for an apology, but you ain't gonna get it. But I'll tell you what I will give you. I'll give you a check for $100. <laughs> you ready to get this party started? Hell yeah. Y'all to make the biggest noise y'all can. He's a real good friend of mine. He just got back overseas entertaining the troops. Everybody give it up for Lee Adams. <laughs> Show on Saturday night, ain't going to Sunday school in the morning. I bet you. 